Hello, hello, everybody. It's 12.57 a.m. Central Time on the 27th of April, 2023. It's Thursday here in the United States, and I hope you're doing well. We are here to talk about some seismic events that have struck since my update yesterday. Worth mentioning and worth showing to you because several of the areas that I talked about in my last update have now been struck, and I'd like to look up a few of the areas in the United States as well, which started move, started to move, and also to reiterate the warnings that were previously issued because we're looking at the potential of significant activity developing out on top of the two sets of sevens which struck just a day and a half ago. And that being said, let me turn on a display capture so you can see my screen ever so slightly better. And we'll come in here and just go into the West Pacific where the two sevens were topic of my last update. Now since then, up to the north, look at the white colored earthquakes. Look where they are. They're going from North Japan up to the Kuril Islands. And it's multiple earthquakes striking today in this one single spot north of Japan. All these other earthquakes marked in pink struck yesterday. I can get those out of there. And here's what hit today. So it's pretty obvious. We moved on the north side of Japan across the whole set of Kuril Islands. Let's get a earthquake from the USGS open here if we even have one. I don't even know if we'll. These are all from the Geophone Potsdam, which I am using the Geophone Potsdam feed now instead of the EMSC, just in case you're keeping close track of what we're looking at. Now let's get the coordinates on this and again just show you here on the USGS map first. And we'll go up in the Northwest Pacific. Look at this line of quakes. Now the spacing on it's almost perfect to be a standing wave where each one of these is like the peak of a wave that comes up and we're looking at about the same sized earthquake spread across the area with the biggest of the bunch in the middle where the wave is reflecting back into itself. Now this is what we were looking for to happen. We were looking for this area to move. However, I'm looking for a six, upper six to low seven to strike here from Hokkaido going north into the Kuril Islands. Now what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna zoom in on the area and the middle point between all these earthquakes, that's the spot to watch this week for our new break to take place for our new large earthquake north of Japan from Hokkaido north to the Kurils. All just moved today. That's just where we're starting the update. So in case you're not paying attention, day and a half ago, we talked about this spot. Now, and there were no earthquakes there to report on at all. It was open. Now, all the way across it, it just suddenly shifted. But what shifted is the question. Let's get back to the red lined map here from the USGS, the plate boundary map. And really what you're going to see that shifted is the whole northwest side of the Pacific. And that just responded, this shift today, after down in the southwest and over to the east by southeast, those two sevens struck. Okay, so let's just recap. Two sevens on either side of the Indo-Australian plate, followed today by on the far northwest side of the Pacific, this starts to shift up here. And we were expecting that. Now we're looking for that to go a magnitude and a half, almost two magnitudes larger. Two magnitudes larger would take us right to a seven. Magnitude and a half would take us to 6.5 to 6.9. And I'm looking for anywhere from upper six to low seven to strike in the Kuril Islands. Now, same time that increased, look who else took a step up? Hawaii. All the way down to Hawaii. Look at this, guys. Check it out. New four came rolling in. Now, this is about a magnitude under what I was expecting for Hawaii. I'm looking for Hawaii to actually maybe go up to 5 in the 5 range. But right now, we're at 4.1. We're out off the coast next to Lo'ihi, or south of Pahala. New 4 striking there today. Now, you can trace that 4 back to all this disturbance up here. So the white-colored earthquake struck today. Let's get back down to the south, and this all hit yesterday. I do not have the New Zealand feed turned on, so we don't see all the smaller earthquakes but I can just go ahead and tell you right now, we're going to see a big increase going down across New Zealand. I might as well just issue the warning now for South New Zealand, right at the tip of South New Zealand, for potential 5.0 plus activity enough to knock things off shelves. Could go even bigger since we're dealing with 6 coming in. Well, mid-range 5 coming in. So down to the south, southwest side of New Zealand. Could go from on land down to out in the ocean here on the plate boundary. Let me show you on the 
USGS map, what I'm talking about here, the red line here. So we just moved up north. I'm going to expect it to move down south. We just moved up north 5.9 and expect down south 5.5. Not that much loss of an energy going across New Zealand. Okay, you see where we're talking about here. Previously up here yesterday, going to move down to here in the next few days. Australia, guys, look, all the way around. All the way around the Indo-Australian plate, going up into India and China. Well, not China, but up into India. And back around, down, and around the whole Indo-Australian plate, showing some activity over the past several days. A topic of discussion in my last video. When that starts to happen, I start to look for new earthquake activity to creep in from up here in the northwest. I don't see anything reported now, but keep an eye out for it. And the size of the earthquakes that come in up here will kind of let you know what's getting ready to go across Australia. And I think it's going to take a huge step up. I think you might start to see some noteworthy sized earthquake activity down here on land. Now, the spots to watch are the regular spots. So first place I watch is up here to the northwest. I look for any kind of activity to come in here. Fours, fives, right here on this arrow. This goes right in between two sets of cratons. Cratons, plural. There's multiple interior portions of the plate for Australia. But it's like an avenue. The energy comes in from the northwest. So look for a seismic disturbance out here, right off the coast, right along the coast. And when that happens, four to five, I would think it would be, then we'll see a big outbreak down here to the east by southeast, down by Adelaide and Kangaroo Island, Melbourne, southeast Australia again. And the size that comes in is the size that goes across. So uh, that's just what we have to watch for. It hasn't happened yet. It's all going on on the plate boundary to the north on this red line. But it's going to go across the plate. It's already gone all the way around the outside edge. It has to go across the center. It's going across the center to the west. Let's get into that. Look at this. Boom. Here, 5.7, 5.5. Go back a day and a half. Another 5.7 of 5.5. Two sets of 5.7s and 5.5s. But look where they are. Do you see? Well, hold on. Here's Australia. And we look out here over to the west and look what's there. It's the western edge of the Indo-Australian plate. Now, the eastern edge moved with a 5.5 to 5.7 down in New Zealand. So New Zealand, and then over all the way opposite on the other side of the Indo-Australian, over here and here. Now, we already know we're moving across the north side, and the only thing missing is China. And that's where my other warning is going for a noteworthy-sized earthquake to strike. Right in here. Why there? Because that's where the bend of the plate is. That's where this wave... It's trying to go up, around, and out, out over across Iran, over into Europe. Now that gets me into the other spots that got hit. Let's jump all the way across and take a look at this. A new five struck the Aegean Sea. Look at that. Wow. Now why am I saying wow? Well, look at the earthquakes from yesterday. Let's take this. There we go. See the pink-colored earthquakes from yesterday? There was no earthquake activity here in the middle. And when I talked about this a day ago, we talked about the two fours on either side. And I talked about the middle point between the two fours and that it would be filled in with a new larger earthquake. Well, we're a full magnitude larger. We're 10 times increase in power there at the center at the Aegean Sea. So let's just recap. A four over on one side, a four over on the other. And now the new five broke out in the middle. This is like, again, a sloshing wave in a tank. And the new middle point sorted itself out. Now you can look here where my mouse is and here where my mouse is. The halfway points, or well, here let me show you. The, the, this way is much more visible. Here where the rings overlap and here where the rings overlap are the next two spots to get hit. The next halfway points between the earthquakes. So this one divided the area in half. The next two are going to divide the area into quarters. And then... The two areas on either side of those will get hit, and that'll divide the area into eighths. Once we get to that point, usually there's a large earthquake. I just snapped my fingers in case you didn't hear. So once we get to that point where we're bouncing around and we get multiple earthquakes striking between the multiple earthquakes, and it looks like a hot mess, it usually is a hot mess, quote, unquote. That's a real scientific term. <laughs> yeah, a little joke there. So right now, we're taking a magnitude step up. We just went from fours all the way up to fives. That's a big increase to go tenfold increase in power. Right? It doesn't sound like that much to go from fours to fives, but it's a step up. And I think we're going to take the next step up. 
The next step up is 5.9 to 6. And that's just like what's going on on in the West Pacific. So recapping, big deep earthquake activity that started all this many, many days ago, 11 days ago, deep earthquake activity. Followed on both sides by the sevens. Now a spread of fives has gone all the way up to Japan and all the way over to Europe, hitting in our middle points where we were expecting. Now the solar storm arrived and there was the big air glow event, the northern lights, that came all the way down to northern Missouri apparently and it was visible all across the northern hemisphere over in Europe as well. Huge amount of electrical energy tied to that. That goes down to ground. That was a day and a half ago now. Now, usually within about three days of a big solar storm where there's a lot of northern lights, air glow, electrical charge in the upper atmosphere and ionosphere, that all goes down to ground, that electrical power. And the ground is the ground. It's the crust. But down below the crust is the magma, and below the magma supposedly is the core. And the core is most likely an electrically induced plasma of some kind, like a plasma torch almost. That's what I think it is. Uh, It's not solid, that's for sure. That, they have to strike that out of all the textbooks. Anyway, that the solar power, the power coming from the charged particles that are going to, through the atmosphere, go down to ground, and within three days, we tend to see an effect that we tend to see new deep earthquakes come vibrating up. The core of the earth is like a big bass drum or like a big bass speaker in a car. We all understand how that works. And it's vibrating very low frequency out in all directions from it. Very low frequency electrical coming up through the magma. Hits the undersides of the plates and discharges up through the plates and up into the sky. And lightning comes out of the ground and goes up into the sky. And that's how most lightning is generated out of the ground into the sky. There's cloud to cloud lightning, of course. but And there's cloud to ground lightning, but a majority of lightning comes out of the ground, goes up into the sky while it's coming at that charge. It's coming from deep down in the earth. So, solar storm happens, charged particles go to the core of the earth, then within two to three days coming up, we see the vibration and the deep earthquakes kick off. And then, after the deep earthquakes kick off, we see stuff like this. The big earthquakes, shallow, right up at the surface. But first, the deep earthquakes happen. And the deep earthquakes come from that solar charge coming in and going down to the core and vibrating that core. The core increasing the frequency of vibration from the core. And then it comes up as deep quakes. And then up above those deep quakes are the big shallow quakes. And they spread out. That's what we're seeing now is the spread out of the big quakes after the deep quakes from the last solar storm So, here we are now. A new solar storm is happening. And we're going to see a new round of new deep earthquakes pop off where our letter Ds are. And we have to watch for the size of the deep earthquakes. So, D here, Fiji. Ds here at Indonesia and Philippines. D at Japan. D at Kamchatka. And D over here in the Mideast. Oh, one more. South America, Chile border. Watch those points. It's not that many. And we watch for new deep earthquakes. And if there's deep fours, that's one thing. Deep fives, deep sixes. Then we start seeing major, major earthquake activity once we start seeing a bunch of new deep earthquakes. So we have to watch for that. Now, United States. Let's get into the U.S. So a new mid-range 3 to near 4.0 earthquake in some reports, depending on which stations you check. Struck in Idaho, up above the magma chamber for Yellowstone. This fulfills our forecast for Yellowstone entirely. We were looking for a swarm to hit at Yellowstone and go up into the 4.0 range. Now, you see it's marked as 3.5, but, I mean, we can go over and look at the stations if you guys really want to see. We'll go down the magnitude list, and uh, these are local magnitudes. And what I do is I throw out the high end and I throw out the low end, but throwing out the low end means we're going to throw out the 3.5. Throwing out the high end means we're going to throw out 4.1s and 4.2s. And if we throw out the 4.1s and 4.2s and 4.3s and 4.4s, what does it leave us with? It leaves us with a 3.9 to 4.0, just by average. So it was a 4, and it struck up above the magma chamber. This is the edge of the North American craton. Look in Idaho. 
see the purple part. Look over to the east, over through Yellowstone, and there's the rusty brownish part. That's the interior portion of the craton. Now that you've seen that, look at the quakes. Matches both. And the biggest of the bunch coming across is in Idaho, up above the magma chamber for Yellowstone. Now Yellowstone's over here where the swarm is. This swarm is at the surface. Now, there's always hundreds, if not thousands, of tremors that happen per day at Yellowstone when the magma moves down below. But this is actual fracturing, earthquakes, and a little swarm broke out there at the park. But the magma chamber goes down below Idaho, central Idaho, and it has a feeder that actually comes from over in Oregon. Okay, now over to the west. No new earthquake activity to bring to your attention except for a small outbreak on the Seattle Fault, Puget Sound, east side of the Olympic Peninsula. We're still moving at Mount Rainier. We're still moving at Mount St. Helens. Somebody sent me a message on my phone, and it was a relative, and said, hey, they're running all kinds of stuff on Mount St. Helens right now for some reason. National Geographic. I'm like, wow, really? Wow, they're running stuff on St. Helens, are they? Now, usually... That's just chance. But I want to keep an eye on these two volcanoes in particular over the next week and just see what happens. I'm not saying it's going to erupt or anything. I'm just, I want to see what happens seismically at these two volcanoes in light of the news that it's on the news or it's on TV. It's just something to keep an eye out for, that there may be precursor signs that show up in mainstream media that we don't have access to, kind of preconditioning that shows up. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just keeping an eye out for it. There are earthquakes that are striking. N nothing burger. Zeros, ones, just a handful of them. It doesn't mean eruption. I want to see what happens seismically at those two, at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. I don't normally do this, by the way. Don't normally focus on a volcano, but I want to see what's going on. Okay, and I'll tell you if I find anything, if anything increases at that location, down to the south, we go into Oregon and we have an explosion. I do want to go look this up. I want to see where the explosion is. I want to see if it's at a quarry. That's all I want to see. If it's at a quarry, we move right along. If it's not at a quarry, then we're going to go see what's going on. Why don't you come along with me on a voyage of discovery and we'll go see what's at the location. Oh, wow, look at that. Well, you know, I set up that target on the... The base of the tower, and it's easy target practice, I suppose. Guys, we're at the base of a large electrical tower. These are a set of electrical lines going across the area. High voltage transmission lines, not the kind that bring power to your house directly. Uh, this is more like a feeder for an area where it look it splits off. They cross right here where there's three sets. Hold on, three distinct sets of high voltage power lines all overlapping right here, and then they spread out across this field, all three, and on the edge of it is where our earthquake is. Okay, what's this? Oh! I'm gonna get a sip of my drink. Well, remember what I told you about the northern lights in very low frequency and the core of the earth vibrating like a bass drum and it being a plasma core, not solid? And I told you it comes up through the crust, right? As electricity, lightning, that comes up and comes up out of the crust, goes up in the sky. Well, that's very low frequency that's coming up out of the crust and going up into the sky. Guess what else is very low frequency? It's 60 hertz, for instance, going through these lines here. Human-made electricity, human-generated electricity, very low frequency, going through the lines and going through the stations and everything that's here. So, earthquake. Next to very low frequency source. We see these all over the world. We see this over in Japan. We see this over in China. We see this over in Iran. We see it all over the world. I'm not saying it's one country specific over in Europe. Nuclear power stations. Coal-fired power stations. Natural gas. Wind. Solar. Steam. Turns out when you're generating and moving a lot of electricity on the surface, this very low frequency wave that's down in the crust is attracted to that point and releases it at that point, and you get earthquakes at the point down below where humans have up above run power lines and high-voltage, high-power transmission lines. High-voltage, high-power, low-frequency. 
and we get earthquakes next to them. Oh, I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Explosions down in the crust. Or technically, this is listed at 0.4 kilometers. It would be like at the surface, even though it's negative. It's not up in the sky. That's not a sky quake. This is above sea level. So, explosion at the power line. Okay. It's too many to ignore. And we could look at others. I don't know what this one is at the border, but let's go see. It's not a, well, it's a 19-kilometer depth earthquake. Maybe we should go look it up. Go see what's there. This is turning into a sleuthing thing. It's uh, You start to get a little suspicious if you th see things like this. Oh, wait, that was the previous quake. Let me get the coordinates on this. There we go. There we go. Let's go to the north, run up to the border, and see if there's anything of any significance here. Uh, what is this? Looks like a wind farm. What? What is this? These are all wind farm blade. Oh, wow, look at that. A geothermal turbine generator. Look, electrical generation, big time going on right here. Huge. Look at that. They've got a geothermal turbine there. See those? It might be natural gas fired, but look at all the power lines coming in there. you got to be kidding me, man. All right. Okay. I mean, I'm glad I looked it up. Earthquake right next to the power generation facility. There's no doubt about that. Looks like we also have a little refinery here, but nothing major. Refinery is something else entirely, but... To have the electrical generation there. I mean, come on, man. There's turbine there and everything. Very low frequency generation again. Wow. All right. I'm glad I'm looking them up. This is why you guys got to do this. These are at the volcanoes. I don't need to look those up. That's inside of the crater of Mount St. Helens. And this is all around the volcano at Mount Rainier. Well, should we go look up the other microquakes? I mean, geez. What about the... Uh, well, I mean, should I call it a quake? Look, it's another explosion. Now, these are not quarry blasts, just so everybody understands. They can list a quarry blast, and I will show you quarry blasts down in California. So, you can list a quarry blast. When you see an explosion, that means explosion. Whether it's down in the crust or not, that's another story. Let's go see what's going on here. What's, what's at this location? Another set of high-voltage power lines right here, right next to it. But anything else? Look, you can follow the power lines. I wonder where they go. Go right down the... Oh, that's odd. That's an odd, it's an odd farming. Is that, it's an odd place to be farming, wouldn't you say? Okay. Anything else? Well, you got the big high voltage power lines. You got an explosion next to a quarry though. So I'm not shocked, no pun intended, since we're talking about electrical lines. We got the electrical lines over to the east, but come on, there's a quarry right there. So I would actually, if I see a quarry at a spot, that's what I want to see. If I see a quarry, I'm wash my hands of it so that one's an actual blast what about this one all the way in the northwest verlot washington verlo what's with all the 666 coordinates that's like the third earthquake i've pulled that have 0.666 coordinate on the back that's odd because you have a one in 999 chance right We have a 1 in 999 chance, and we keep landing on 666. I wonder what's going on. Not my deal. Look, we're at the volcano here. So this is not an explosion. This is, well, I, I would sure hope not. Small earthquake at Three Fingers South. The old ancient Pleistocene volcano. This is why you got to look them up. Right here. So you find a volcano. You find electrical line. Oh, well, first of all. Volcano, volcano, volcano. So that's Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and three fingers south. And then over to the east, you have an actual explosion at a quarry. And then you have power line, power line. Or power generation, power generation, not power line, power line. If it was just lines, it would be one thing. What about the 0 0.6 down along the coast? I mean, come on, man. Another explosion? Seriously? Seriously? This is the only spot in the country where there's any explosions reported. you got to be kidding me. It's like they're changing all the earthquakes to be explosion. Let's go see what's going on. Sleuthing again.
What do we have going on here? Anything? I mean, you know, where's the quarry, right? Uh, well, this time, there's not a quarry there, Dutch Hub. Is there anything else worth mentioning here nearby? I start seeing explosions in the plate, and I really would raise my eyebrows, thinking that there might be something coming along the coast of Oregon here. Explosions? I would wonder if there's tremors, but I don't want to check the tremor map. Long story on why. Let's just say University of Washington. I don't want to go on any one of their pages. We'll go over and look at Myrtle Point. Is there anything worth mentioning here? I don't see anything like the U.S. Navy, you know, a antenna array up in Washington. They have stuff like that. But I don't see anything worth mentioning here at all. Seriously, there's nothing here on the screen. No, to justify the explosion either, though. Okay. All right. Well, whatever caused the explosion, it's nothing there. That's where one of those cases where we would crack a joke about exploding trees or Bubba's out there with some tannerite because how do you explain it? As you go down to the south, we have a noteworthy number of earthquakes developing in Northern California. I've got a warning going in Northern California for a 5 to 5.5 to break out in the next few days here on land by Eureka. It's enough to knock things off shelves and catch people off guard. Now, yesterday I brought up this swarm that happened just east of Oroville, or east northeast of Paradise, California. And that is a change to have a swarm there. And in light of the earthquakes that struck up in Northern California a few days ago, but now it's a definitive line in the last 24 hours of earthquakes going down across California and Nevada's border. It's a stepping stone path quite literally pointing down to the nuclear test sites down here to the south. So a diagonal line of earthquakes along the California-Nevada border and the biggest of the bunch in the three range, striking along California's coast, San Andreas, of course, creeping section, but it too is a diagonal line going northwest to southeast. So we have diagonal line here, northwest to southeast, all the way along California's border. And then we have another line going along the coast on the San Andreas. Now, which would you say is more? Well, power-wise, more is on the San Andreas. We have twos and threes on the San Andreas. Over to the east, we have zeros, ones, and a two. So power-wise, we're more along the coast. But I would say number-wise, we're actually maybe even more over along the California-Nevada border. It certainly area-wise is bigger across the California-Nevada border. So the size of the area moving is bigger across California-Nevada border. But they're both moving in the same direction, east by southeast. West by northwest to east by southeast. That's the line. You can connect the dots both. What's going on? Well, it all goes back to up here where there's nothing. And some explosions now. The, the electrical lines are exploding, right? Well, I'm looking for a new 5.5 to break out up here as the new push comes in off the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Let me show you. Here's the Juan de Fuca. I'm looking for a new push to come in and come down into Northern California and break here right where they meet. Right here. 5.5. The reason I'm looking for 5.5 is because of all the other 5.5s and, up, and even upwards to 5.9 going around the whole plate as evidenced by what's going on in Japan today or down by New Zealand or over to the west of the Pacific entirely on the Indo-Australian plate. Or in South America, it's all 5.5-ish all the way around the plate, which means 5.5 is then coming over here on the east side of the plate as well. It's going all the way around the plate. East side of what plate? East side of the Pacific, guys. It's going all the way around the Pacific. 5.5s. What's this? A new 5 just struck down at Chile. It's going all the way around the plates and out to the adjacent plates. This is the Nazca plate. This is the Pacific. Going one full plate over, we have 5 spreading out now down to the southeast side. It's going all the way around. Should come into the United States as well. Same size. 5 to 5.5. Off the edge, south edge of the Juan de Fuca. Rolling in here like a river, basically. Coming in into Northern California out of the Juan de Fuca. Okay? And it's the two lines of earthquakes that are... Here, hold on. Let me turn the rings back down. You can't even see California. The two lines of earthquakes point back up to here where it's just completely silent and open which is where we were previously moving, and I said I was going to look for fires. Well, I checked again today. I'm not going to waste your time showing you now on the weather satellite 
Uh, no fires have broken out here yet next to Paradise or Oroville or any of these areas. I'm not saying they're going to. I'm just looking to see if they do because of the earthquake activity that showed up up here. So a swarm broke out right here, east by northeast of Oroville and Paradise, and that's a new change that wasn't there. And this showed up after we saw that movement a few days ago up in northern California, which made me tell you about this spot to watch, and then it just got the swarm yesterday. And now I would watch it for fires just in case, just in case. But why would we watch it for fires? If you're new here, you have no clue what I'm talking about. Right here at California-Nevada's border, there's Lake Tahoe on the south side and Pyramid Lake on the north side. But to see what I'm talking about, I have to show you on Google Earth. There's a feature here. There's something here. We have to turn off everything. Literally everything. Here's Lake Tahoe. Here's Pyramid Lake. Here's our borders, just so you know. California's on the west side or the left side, and Nevada's on the east side. But anyway, I'm turning the borders off because right here in the middle where the border goes across is this. This giant oval shape. Now, this giant oval shape is lined with its own volcanoes. It has two basins on either side, and on either side are two geothermal features. Steamboat Springs, down here. And up on the north side, we have the needles at Pyramid Lake, with all their tufa... Oh, right, right here, actually. With all their tufa deposits, is a geothermal field here with geysers and fumaroles. So we have two geothermal fields equally spaced, pretty much, on both sides of this giant oval feature. Two basins, one's Lake Tahoe, the other's Pyramid Lake. And this is an undiscovered supervolcano caldera. Massive. Well, I shouldn't say undiscovered because I found it live. How did I find it? Well, first of all, I've got no credit for finding this thing. I haven't named it yet, even really, but it's lined with volcanoes. It gets hit with earthquakes all the way around the outside edge, and fires break out around the outside edge of this place. Many times it's happened, over and over again. First earthquakes, then fires. And when I saw this, I was like, wait a second. That's a giant oval shape. It's lined with volcanoes, gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge. That's got to be a caldera of a supervolcano because... Let me show you the documented one here. This one is Long Valley Caldera. Smithsonian has the place marks on it. You can read all the info on it. They've done VLF measurements to see how much magma is down below this thing. It's got 1,000 cubic kilometers of melt, classifying as a supervolcano. Okay, it's got its own volcanoes all around the outside edge. Separate volcanoes make this up, like Mammoth Mountain, for instance. Okay, Mono Inyo craters on the north side. And this is smaller, the one I'm showing you here, the documented one is smaller than the one up here that I had to find on my own by earthquakes striking around the outside edge of it and fires breaking around the outside edge of it. Now let's turn our towns back on because look, look where we are. I mean, it, it, it's, you know. So in case you don't know, here's Oroville, here's Paradise, here's where all our fires keep breaking out over and over again. We had the big meltdown and all that good stuff. Bad stuff. It was horrible. I say good stuff sarcastically. This is the supervolcano caldera just to your east. And the fires break out around it as clearly something shifting down below. Back to the quakes. Look at it. The quakes go all the way around and up into the middle of it. Perfectly. Just like down here to the south, down at Long Valley Caldera, let me take it back a couple days, and you'll see it. Cluster spreading around and out from it. And this one's much bigger. Cluster and spreading out and around from it. Connecting to the two, there's two of them. Two supervolcanoes at the California-Nevada border. The one I just showed you that I found myself, and the one that already is known about at Long Valley. So that's huge to find out, right? Well, that's why you're getting a bunch of earthquakes there all the way around it. It's a previous fracture point for Mother Nature. Doesn't mean it's going to erupt, but the earthquakes are giving away that it's there, or was there. Is there? It's still there. It's still moving. Could future uh, eruptions come from it? Possible. Possible. It is. It's possible. But not likely now. The rest of the earthquakes going down in a diagonal line. I already told you about Long Valley Caldera. Do I need to show it to you again? 
That's the supervolcano, the well-known one. Once we go over across into Nevada's border and go across into Nevada, well, here, let me just show you what's there. Here's Long Valley Caldera. We go right across over into here, and we'll turn our place marks back on for our volcanoes. Myers Mountain, unnamed, 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 and Blair Cone. I want to see the unnamed. Let's go see the Unnamed with a set of power lines going across it? Are you kidding me? Or is that a road? Looks like power lines. They are. Look, you can see the shadows of them, barely. Okay, all right. Uh, the set of power lines going across the middle of the desert over the volcano. Look at this one. What do we got going on here? Mining. Old mining. Somebody's taking some time on that. Look at that. Look at the tuftage on this thing. Unnamed. Well, I guess if you go plant your flag on it, you get to name it. <laughs> Don't do that, guys. That'll be real dangerous. Myers Mountain is next to it. Three sets of volcanoes. And then over here to the west, Clayton Valley. Clayton Valley is the marked volcanic field from the Smithsonian, but that's where we go over to all three sets. Down to the east by southeast. I'm going to pull the coordinates just so we can be accurate on this. Goldfield, Nevada. Down there in Goldfield. I wonder what's there. I think there's gold. Heavy elements. Heavy elements are here for certain. I, I guarantee you there's some elements that are even heavier than gold. What's heavier than gold? I don't know. Maybe stuff like uranium and plutonium. Stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and turn on our Google Earth community so I can show you what I'm talking about here. These are all nuke test sites where we actually partnered up with the Brits and the French. Here, 1984, December 9th. 103 kiloton detonation. Underground, of course. So, over here in Goldfield, you might be finding more than gold. Might be a little bit hot gold and radioactive. On the other side of Obsidian Butte, now there are volcanoes which are here, but I would lend towards the man-made faults that are created by the underground detonation of a thousand nukes in the area. That's where the rest of these are happening, down to the south, from this 0 0.2, all the way down to the 1.2. And we'll go right in the middle to show you. Indian Springs, Nevada. And out here in Nevada, at Indian Springs, nuke test sites. It doesn't mean nukes now, guys. Don't worry. And they're not blasting out some kind of underground chambers. It would be much bigger. But right here is Doomtown. Here's the quake. Here's Doomtown. Where they blew away the town at the surface, right? Operation Rise Line. And, of course, I show this all the time as it gets hit, as the wave comes through, all the underground nuke test sites. And I don't know the name of this one. U.S. Nuke Operation Noggin. N-O-G-G-I-N. Noggin. Wow. September 6, 1968. 120 kilotons. How they come up with the damn names on these things, I don't know. Anyway, hundreds and hundreds of tests underground here create man-made faults which are prone to be hit as this wave is traveling through the area. The wave I'm talking about is the same wave that's traveling in a diagonal line down California and Nevada's border and the California coast on the San Andreas right down to the 0 0.8. The 0 0.8 dead ends someplace. It's called Parkfield, California. The earthquake capital of the world. They sell merch in the town, claiming to be such. It's a bold claim, guys. I'm coming to verify. I'm never leaving. I heard it's beautiful there. It's right along the San Andreas, though. No big deal, though, right? Well, it might not be for the people who live there. However, uh, I've never felt an earthquake, so I think if I ever felt one, I'd freak. Even though I tell everybody to be prepared and not be scared. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've never felt an earthquake, knock on wood, of any kind. And the only earthquake in the past 10 years to strike St. Louis area that was felt by a bunch of people happened on the day that I left St. Louis, which is so odd. Now, what am I zooming in here? On here. 
I'm zooming in on oil and gas wells. Now you'll notice all these oil and gas wells are right here next to the San Andreas. Now I just showed you a line of quakes coming down the San Andreas and dead ending right here. Well, this is where the oil wells and drill points start. They go in a line down this way on the interior part of the valley, across the valley, and end up down here with tens of thousands of more oil wells. And there's a lot, and I mean a lot, going all the way in a big letter J shape and back up and across this. This is the San Andreas. Next to it are all the drill points. I'm beating a dead horse on this because I've talked about so many times, but I do this for my new viewers every time. There's a new spread coming down the San Andreas, and it's 3.1 worth of energy. How do I know it's a 3.1's worth of energy? Well, there, first of all, there's a 3.1 on the creeping section. Second of all, out in front of it all, there's a 3.1 from yesterday that preceded all this. So, let's recap. 3.1 going down to the south next to our oil and gas pumping operations along the San Andreas, stopping there basically next to Parkfield. 3.1 in the middle of it all, coming down, and over on the east side, it's a whole magnitude and a half, it's almost two magnitudes less over at the California-Nevada border. It all points back up to here. Something is displacing all of California right now. You can see it in the last day and a half. Two lines of quakes, one down the coast, one down the border. Once we get over to Nevada, we branch off, go over into Utah, which I talked about in my update yesterday. Nothing's changed except for a single earthquake added next to Dutchman's Draw Volcano of all places. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, right? The name, Dutchman's Draw. We could talk about Texas. We could talk about Oklahoma. We could talk about the East Coast. So Texas started to pick up in seismic, and we're going to take the next step up. I would expect new upper four to possibly even near record-setting fives to come rolling into Texas on the west side of Texas in the next several days. Yeah. So Texas, hold on to your hats. Going to go up on the edge of the Craton. It's a slam dunk that it should be on its way, and it should be a magnitude larger from where we are now. And you were topping out near four. So next step up is fives. Now we watch. Where do we watch? We watch right in between our current sets of earthquakes. Now there's how many here? I mean, we come out of New Mexico and we go all the way over to central Texas. So what would you just say the halfway point between all those four sets of quakes is? The triangulated point around the bend. I would say it's somewhere right down in here at Big Bend, Texas. So that's what we're going to watch. New upper four to low five. Striking at Big Bend, Texas should get everyone's attention across the panhandle all the way down to the border. Oklahoma is going to take the next step up as well, but it should be a magnitude less than Texas. So we'll put it in the mid-range four level. It'll be the first mid-range four in months striking in Oklahoma. Central Oklahoma is where I'll watch. If this was like a giant target of a ring of earthquakes, we just look right in the middle of it all where there's no earthquake now. It looks like a giant heart shape. If you were to trace this out, it would look like a heart, wouldn't it? If you did connect the dots around the outside edge. Anyway, at the center is where we're going to see the new mid-range four. East Coast, I still have the warning going. It's going to stand for the next several days, which is Virginia. Virginia, we're going to watch north to central Virginia. This is where you got your 6.0 earthquake back in 2011. You guys remember that? This time, I think it's going to be in the four range, 4 to 4.5. Again, just like the previous one. Now, last time I issued a warning for a 4.5, I warned New Jersey, Delaware. And where did it hit? 150 miles outside of my warned area over here in the ocean, 4.5 hit. This is this week, last week, whatever. It might even still be on the feed. No. Seven days ago? Okay. So, seven days ago, 4.5 earthquake struck out here. I was looking forward to strike at Delaware, New Jersey. It struck out in the ocean. Hopefully, that'll happen again. So this time, when the 4.5 comes roll, I'm looking for Virginia. I suppose that means it'll strike out the ocean out here, right? I've been wrong twice on this, so. I mean, is it wrong, though? I mean, we're looking for a 4.5 to come in next to New Jersey, and it strikes out in the ocean. That's the earthquake we're looking for. It just struck out in the ocean, not on land. I mean, I'm trying to get it down to 200 miles as my final thing here before I can sign off and retire. Yeah, that's a joke. You can't ever retire from social media. Anyway, in the far northeast... I told my viewers yesterday, I'm going to continue to tell you, watch out for new mystery booms and rumbles. They might try and blame it on jets or, 
I don't know, natural gas explosions in the ground or whatever. They come up with unique explanations to get out of saying that the plate is shifting. They don't want people to panic. You start saying the plate is shifting up in the Northeast, the people imagine the, you know, buildings falling. The San, They imagine the San Andreas. You don't... When I say the plate is shifting, it's shifting seismically. It's a bunch of small earthquakes that strike in an area and a bigger one that strikes in the middle. It doesn't mean the whole plate's moving and a bunch of buildings are going to fall down. Now, guys... Oh, man. I, I don't even know if I should tell you. It's the most bizarre thing. And I would never... I, I'm into science. I'm not a, a soothsayer or a, uh, a prophet. Okay, I don't, you know, relay any kind of weird information from outside sources or anything like that. This is my own personal thing that happened to me. And I... I decided I was going to tell you, okay? So I'm going to tell you. I had a dream. This is so weird. I've never had a dream like this. And I would never normally tell you guys a dream in my science update. But it has to do with shifting of buildings. And here. Now, I used to live in Chicago years ago at North and Western in what was once... I w- what I would call just a really, you know, d- a dilapidated neighborhood at Northern Western back in the day, back in the 90s when I lived there, in the early 2000s. But in the dream, and, I, and I, I can promise you, I never have dreams like this. This is why I'm telling you. It's just the most bizarre thing. So first of all, I haven't been there in years. But I'm on the south side of Chicago on those elevated highways. There's a whole bunch of elevated highways in South Chicago where you can... You're driving into the city. You're not in the city. It's still kind of off in the distance, but it's definitely you're in the city. And a bunch of elevated highways and billboards off to the side of the highway, right up at the highway level. And all the traffic has stopped. This is in Chicago. And I'm in a car, and I get out of the car. And everyone else is getting out of their cars, and we're on the bridge. And it's an open-air bridge. There's no covering on top or anything. These are the open-air highway bridges. They're just stack and pack, almost like overlaid highways, or interchange kind of thing. And there's a guy I've never seen with his family, and he looks at me, and he's maybe of a, a Latina heritage. He's got a buzz cut, and this guy looks at me, and I look at him, and then behind him, off in the distance, all of the buildings are falling apart and crumbling and, and just just crushing and falling. All the buildings, every single building, everywhere I looked all around, it is all starting to fall. And the sound was coming, and I, it wasn't an earthquake. There was no shaking like an earthquake happening. And all the buildings start collapsing. In the distance, I see this. And I look at the guy, and he looks at me again. And before you know it, the bridge were on starts to vibrate and rumble and it falls and i remember in the dream i'm thinking directed energy weapon in my dream this is so you know this is me right dutch since you're talking to here in my dream i'm thinking directed energy weapon somehow is causing this and all the buildings are crumbling and then the bridge crumbles and the bridge falls and the bridge falls and i look at the guy and i go run laterally instead of again i'm like trying it's like the freaking titanic going down and i'm telling people which way to run and this thing falls, and and I'm looking at the ground at this point, and we're way up, and it's not we're not over water, whatever bridge you were on, we're over land, and I'm going down, and I realize I'm going down, and this thing's going down, and the going down falling sensation is happening in the dream, and we hit, we hit, and I woke up, and I was yelling when I woke up, which my wife didn't even hear me. She it was weird because I woke up, I was like, oh, I like woke up like yelling. And I never have dreams like this. It was so freaking bizarre. It really is. So why am I telling you? Well, the people worry up here in the Northeast of shifting buildings, and that's why they hide the booms and rumbles and tell you they're sonic booms and everything like that. They hide the methane blast because they don't want people to think about buildings shifting and falling. Meanwhile, I have this very graphic, rememberable dream of it happening this week. This is, the dream is just a couple days ago over here. In Chicago, where you would imagine big buildings falling if some kind of big seismic shift happened there. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I did want to relay to you that I had the most graphic destruction of city 
dream that you could ever possibly imagine. And I want to tell somebody, including all my viewers, about it in case anything happens. And I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a dreamer of dreams. I'm not a person to do that. But if so, help me God, if anything happens in Chicago, even in the next year, I'm going to point back to this video and say something because it was so specific and so freaky. Anyway, that wraps up our update. Do you guys, speaking of the crumbling buildings, and you know, if you're in a tall building and a big, you know, earthquake and it's a stone stack structure, I, I mean, unless you have some kind of steel box that somehow, and then you'd be trapped in it under a pile of rubble, I don't know what to tell you. You have to know your buildings and accept certain things about them. And I know in stone stack structures, brick stack structures, tall buildings more than a few stories high, you're not going to be getting out during that earthquake. It takes more than a minute or two to get down to the, the first floor, whether you're on an elevator or whether you're on the stairs, even if you're jumping whole uh, levels. Still, a 10-story building is going to take a minute to get down, and usually an earthquake has lasting a minute or two. Big earthquake might last a few minutes, several minutes, but still, getting out of a building is going to be hard. And I don't know what to tell you for that. If you live in a stone stack building, that is a risk you're taking. Now, single-story stone stack buildings and two stories, you do have time to make appropriate plans to either have an exit point or to shelter in place. Okay, now I'm going to tell you to have a, an emergency kit for all of these scenarios. You need to have an emergency kit. I don't sell that stuff, but you can probably gather most of it together in your house already. Change of clothes, set of shoes, flashlight and batteries, first aid kit, sanitation. You can also put in extra keys and IDs. And I remind everybody at the end of my updates because I know there's going to be somebody who listens and there'll be that one person that is, a, you know, a source of life during a disaster for other people who are not prepared or for themselves. So please be prepared. And you can use the emergency kit for other scenarios like severe weather. If you have to evacuate for a flood or a fire, it would come in handy to have all that stuff already. The keys, the IDs, the, you know, the information, the birth certificates and that kind of stuff. That You could have that in a bag ready to go. Why not? Have it over by the door in a closet somewhere easy to grab. And that way, if you have to go at a moment's notice, that's 20 less things you have to fumble with and try to find. You know, I'll tell you something. I think it was in Australia. I think it was the Australian Red Cross of all things. Or maybe it wasn't the Red Cross. Maybe it was the Australian Earthquake Agency. They did a video and they did, took real people in their houses and gave them 30 seconds to get out of the house. To find what they need and to get out of the house. 30 seconds. Something big is happening. You got to get out of the house. Big earthquake, whatever. The, they didn't say for what. They just gave them 30 seconds to get out and to gather the things that they need. And most people ended up with like their sunglasses and like a can of soup. It was the most depressing thing to see because people are fumbling around their house trying to find their purse, trying to find their wallet. Right? You're like, oh shit, it's in my pants. Pardon my language. Ah, oh, my wallet's in my pants, and I'm freaking, which pair of pants, and I'm freaking, on the floor, you know? Oh, I'm sorry, I live like a teenager still. I still have pants on the floor, you know what I mean? Trying to find my wallet here and there. But you know what I mean. Try to find your keys. And that's just the set of keys. So if you have that in an emergency kit, you can remember, oh, I've got all the important stuff in the emergency kit, and I'll grab that and go. All the other stuff is stuff that would be secondary. All right, not trying to lecture you, but I am reminding you, this is serious times all the way around. That doesn't even take into account what's going on around the world with humans. Humans! Thank God I'm not one of them. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, I saw a YouTube video. It said my earlobes match Neo's. Really, a, a true YouTube exists. YouTube video exists out there from many years ago of a guy who got my live shot of my face on one of the streams I did. And he thought I looked like Neo or Keanu Reeves. And he overlaid our earlobes. And he said our earlobes ear matched. And that I was, M, Keanu, reimagining himself online because the movie you know, situation has taken a turn for the worse. And um, that he's decided, I, Keanu, me, I, uh, Neo, have come out to be an earthquake forecaster 
and, and that, that I got some plastic surgery. That's a real video out there. I love YouTube. All right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and sign off now. Now, do you have an earthquake plan for real? You need to know what to do. Don't be scared. You need to be prepared, and being prepared means watching the quakes, and that's why the arrows are on the screen here. So the arrows tell you the next spots to watch. So if you see these white-colored earthquakes and you see the arrows and they're pointing this way, you know to watch downstream for this size or bigger to be heading this way, over this way to the United States, for instance. So when you see this, you watch downstream and watch it come your way. Once it gets to you, you'll know it when the fives hit. Right? And hopefully you'll be preparing for that so when the five hits, you'll say, you're, well, it's supposed to hit in Eureka. The five that I'm looking for is going to hit in Eureka. But you would have a Eureka type moment. You'd be like, oh, there's the five we were looking for. And you won't be completely caught off guard, even though things might still get knocked off your shelves. And you might even still, you know, have a fluttering heartbeat from the, you know, adrenaline rush of the event happening. You know, that's not going to ever go away. But I would think that knowing that it's coming would take the edge off somewhat. Anything else to talk about? Let's go ahead and turn the display capture back on. I don't have any current world events to bring up. Although, it sure seems like everywhere I turn, I'm seeing something that looks a little bit more end timesy. And I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's things are getting rough out there. So remember to love one another and be kind to each other in the face of all the craziness. If you even remember this broadcast this day and age, if you remember a freaking few seconds later, I should be happy. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, have I talked long enough? It's 1.54 a.m. Central Time. I'm thinking it's time to hit save on this sucker and put it over on YouTube for everybody to watch back. Final thing is a thanks to everybody who subscribed on Twitch and on YouTube. Both of them. The subscriptions help. They get my numbers up, and they financially support what I do. Going forward, Duchess and I are going to have a few things, items, that we collect from around the world that we're going to be selling and auctioning. And we're going to have our own separate auctions that I run on a live stream. And we can sit there and watch it auction. And things that we collect from around the world. So those will be interesting items. And uh, we'll get that going at some point as a way to support the operation as well. Everything from antiques to, well, just everything. <laughs> you wouldn't believe some of the things that we've found and that I have. Oh, geologic specimens, specimens that I find in my personal collection. Uh, not the ones that viewers send, but my own personal collection of geologic specimens. We'll be auctioning off stuff like that when I go out in the field and find things. Um, we will put those up for auction, and that would be really cool for my viewers to get. So keep an eye out for that in the next few weeks, and we'll start doing that. Till then, word up. Just please share it. That's I appreciate you guys sharing it. That gets the word out, and that's what this is really about. The financial support comes secondarily. I'll do this even if I don't even have any ads on my videos at all. It's about getting the information out on what I discovered. The social media thing is just to keep me going so I don't have to go back into, you know, cubicle farm kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. We could talk stories about that all day long. Office space level, only worse. I'm more like more like Mulder in the basement of the FBI. It's... Peace out, guys. Much love.